What's good everybody, it's Frank Session here. Everybody knows me as Frank Nitty, the Drew League three-time MVP. I've also played in the big three. My first year we did make it to the championship, which was super exciting. My last three years I've played overseas. I played in Canada, I played in Qatar, and I played in Taiwan. Those are all the places that basketball has taken me. During my journey of basketball, I've gone up against some really good players. I've won some, I lost some. Um, I've gone up against players such as Kevin Durant, James Harden, um, Denzel Valentine, Trey Young, um, Torian Prince, uh, Pascal Siakam. Uh, I, I could name a, a bunch of players. It's helped me become who I am today. Today I'm going to break down three of my go-to moves, and the first one is going to be an in-and-out. So the move we're about to go through is an in-and-out. Uh, why it's one of my go-to moves is because you can use it at any form of the game. Transition, off a of pick and roll, ISO, um, it works in pretty much every predicament on the court. Um, and that's why I choose it as one of my go-to moves. So the big thing with the in and out move, um, you always wanna have your defender kind of square so that you can choose which side you're gonna attack. So when I lean, it's to get my defender to lean with me or prior to the move, I'll do a size up just to see how his feet are gonna move so I can gauge how I wanna pull off the in and out. So if I know I'm about to do it, my favorite thing is to give him a, little, a, a, a light in and out just to see how his body will respond. If I get his body to, res to respond to mine, then I, I've got him beat. If he's stationary, then I know I, I might have to hit him with the counter. So my thing is when, I'm, when I bait him with the first in and out and he doesn't move, it's like, all right, the next one has to be hard. So when it's hard, then I can actually take off and choose. A lot of good defenders can't cut the in and out off. Um, but that's why I have, a, I have a counter to it. Not a lot of defenders are gonna be able to move laterally that quick, at least that I've run into. I've used it on NBA players, overseas players, Drew League players, it, it, it's worked on everybody so far. So my thing is, uh, if you bite, I can always spin back. If you don't, I can just cross and keep going. So um, I got a lot of counters to it. Uh, it's one of my moves to get an easy bucket. It just depends on how the defenders play me and how their body moves with mine. Um, that's kind of how I go off of it. It's instinct sometimes um, to where I just come down and I notice right away they're square and then I'll just hit them with the in and out and go. Um, but a lot of defenders are pretty quick um, at getting that first lateral cutoff. It's the second cutoff that becomes a little bit harder. So once I get the first move and then they don't bite, I can always step and spin. And then I'm off to the rack or I can get to a mid-range pull-up. Uh, it's just a lot more controlled for me than a left to right. I know a lot of people like left to right, but um, I feel like left to right, Easy to get plucked that way and then you're chasing the ball. So the first counter we're gonna go with is gonna be the in and out cross. Um, this is just if, typically I in and out cross bigger defenders. Um, bigger defenders tend to raise when I, when I decide to in and out. And once you raise, I pretty much got you beat. So uh, basically if I'm coming at you and I hit you with the in and out, I'm already downhill. Um, from downhill, I can get to a pull-up, a layup, I can drive and kick. Um, there's multiple forms of basketball I can play out of this one move. Um, and I'm very deceptive when it comes to an in and out. Um, I'm what you consider one of the herky-jerky players, uh, I've been told. So when I do decide to in and out cross, I just make sure I put all my energy um, and effort into the in and out. Even though it might not be everything that, you know, I want it to come out to be, but I still want to have in my back pocket that in and out cross just in case he happens to cut it off. So once I start, I'm coming at him, I hit him with the in and out, cross. The good thing about the counter is if he, if he starts to bait on that, I can always go back to the simple in and out. Um, we'll get into my third counter, but right now, that's just one of the ones that I can keep in my pocket so that, all right, he's catching on to the in and out, let's mix it up.
So the third counter move is gonna be the in and out spin. Um, this one I tend to use on littler defenders because um, they're, they're very low to the ground and they can cut you off pretty well sometimes. So uh, the best way I set this up, same thing always, uh, once I get the catch, sometimes I'll give it a crab dribble to see what the defender does. If not, I can always go right into it off the catch. Um, this is when I know I'm a spin. So if he's pushing up or he's close, I obviously have to gain some ground. Once I hit him with the in and out, I always step. You see how his weight shifted forward? Everybody goes to cut that off. Always step with the right, just so I can quickly spin. A lot of people do theirs a little different. They'll in and out and spin this way. For me, it's too many steps. Um, I was taught to try to get downhill really quick and try to limit the amount of dribbles you take. Um, that's something I learned later. But uh, once I hit them with the in and out and they put all their weight to one way, I'm stepping with the right leg so I can get that positioning. So I don't even have to, once the in and out hits, I don't even have to put the ball down and then gather and then go. It's a quick spin drop and I'm off to the races. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to do it. So basically, typically I will set him up with the in and out, spin, and now I'm already to the hole. If he has a quick recover, there's multiple things you can do out of it, but these are one of the things that have propelled me in my career um, with this move, these counters to help me become, you know, uh, who I am today and who, who've helped me, you know, get to jobs I never thought I could get. Second move I'm gonna talk about is gonna be um, the sham god. I like to call it the sham and cheese. <laughs> a lot of people do it differently than I do it. Um, I use mine in a sense so I can get downhill. I think a lot of people use theirs and more so of a, a running transition move. Um, I've seen Westbrook do it, you know, running at somebody and just throw and pull. Uh, mine's a little different. Mine's along the line of my game. Um, and this is why it works for me. So my thing is, it's, if, you, if you've noticed by now, a lot of my movesets come off in and outs or crab dribbles. Um, my in and out is, is the leader of all moves. So with the sham guy, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so when I start the move, I'm always sizing up the defender. So it's a slope and pull. So it's a slow in and out to a right hand pull. So basically all my counters and everything they've been seeing me doing the game, um, this is guaranteed to work once a game, I promise you. It hasn't let me down yet. And I've been playing for a long time, so it's guaranteed to work once a game. Um, so I make sure the defender's square, or some people like to force me left. Um, I think a lot of players are taught to defend players and push them left. I think we were growing up, that was a lot of people's weak hand. Um, so so my, my instinct always is to make sure they're either eye level or pushing me left and reading my body language. Um, like I said, I always start with a slow in and out to basically see how they're reading it. Once I actually do the in and out, it's a pull going right. Um, I've done this on countless NBA players, overseas players. Um, every time I've done it, everybody at, after the game will ask, did you sham got me or was that a sham guy? And it's kind of like, yeah, it, it, it's not a normal style of basketball, but I put it in a form that looks a little more pure than running and throwing the ball. Um, so it helps me, it helps me. Um, so we're, I'm just gonna go over it one more time. It's a slow crab dribble, in and out, snatch. Okay, so this is Sham God. Um, this is the way I do it. I level with the player depending on which way they're pushing me. It's a slow in and out. Slow in and out to a snatch. Um, snatch pull, whichever one you want to call it. Um, I, I consider it a snatch. 
because most of the time if I in and out somebody, they bite that way and I'm snatching the ball back the other way and getting to the rim or getting to a pull up. Um, I can get to just about anything off this move. Um, like I said, I use it minimum once a game and it's been successful at least 98% of the time. Um, so once again, it's a slow crab, in and out and then snatching right away. Um, like I said, a lot of people do this, but to me that's, it, it's been very like telegraphed and it didn't work well for me when I was younger, so I never actually did it that way. Um, I kind of put it into a, a cross format. Next move I'm going to talk about uh, is going to be the hezzy. Um, a lot of people like the hezzy uh, off the dribble or off the pull up. Uh, my, my hezzy is more so downhill um, or a drive. Um, it's just to put pressure on the defense and open up multiple things. Um, so if my defender's square with me, um, I obviously want to, I'm always a size up. Even if you don't size up, even if you got the ball, you want to just take it off the dribble. You can always take it off the dribble and all I'm doing is opening my body with his body to get him to raise. Um, once he raises, I know I pretty much got him beat. Um, I've used this move a lot and it, it's always worked, um, especially when I'm getting downhill. A lot of people tend to relax or think I'm a pull back when I lift, but it's more so just to get them to respond to my lift and then I'm taking off full speed again um, for a pull up, a kick, a layup. Um, just depends on, you know, uh, what the defense gives me. I'm a big, big and firm believer on take what the defense gives you. Um, and, and that's one of the things I use it for, um, particularly when I'm getting downhill. The first way I'm gonna use it is obviously transition. One of the, I feel like the better ways to use it. So if he's, let's say I'm in transition and he's on my hip and I'm pushing, um, I like to open up so that I can get him to relax. So if he's on my hip, and he's fighting hard, fighting hard, and I stop, and I just wanna go just to get by and get the layup. Uh, that's the big thing uh, with the transition hezzy. It'll open up and give you some space to finish, get downhill. I know a lot of people, when you're pushing the transition, they like to bump and fight. That's great, you wanna use that to your advantage, because if they're bumping and fighting, that means they're a little out of control. It's kinda hard to fight, fight, and, and be very under control. Once they're bumping and bumping, you just wanna get him to Relax for one second. It's just a, a split second heavy. As soon as he relaxes, you take it off again. Um, and like I said, you can do it left, right. All it is is really your leg. Um, so if I'm going right, my left leg is doing a lot of work. It's obviously opening up my body and my right leg is gonna be ready to take off as soon as I get him to open up. So if, he, if he's on my hip, he's pushing, pushing, heavy and I'm gone. This is Frank Nitty. Thanks for tuning in. I hope the three moves that I broke down helped you guys. See you guys next time on Ball is Life. What's up, Ball is Life fam? Thanks for watching this video. If you want to support the movement, make sure you check out the product listing below this video and cop some of this merch.